While cleaning the shop, I found a box of CB radio parts, and of course thought what anyone naturally would, I'ma use these mega Thor hammer. I started by taking one of the magnetic antennas and removing the magnet. The idea behind these was you'd stick it to the top of your car to boost the range of your CB radio, because apparently my grandpa was Burt Reynolds. I took off the antenna, the wire, and most of the casing, but left the metal part and bolt just so it would help center the handle later on. Then I took a yoga mat and cut it into panels to the core of the hammerhead. Four of those panels were nine by four inches and the ends were four by 3.5. They're gonna be inset. I'm not sure if that's exactly the dimensions as the one in the movie. It's certainly close, but I've learned that there are usually multiples of a hero prop in, in movies and they're all a little bit different. My knife was a little dull, which yielded rough edges. So I smoothed those out on a belt sander, which was purchased with paper patron money and has been a total game changer for me. It instantly increased the quality of all of my builds. I mean, I use it on every build. And this prop in particular, I could not do without. My belt sander stopped working and I was like, ah, geez, this is gonna be a hundred bucks to replace it. And that's patron money that could go to, I don't know, better lighting, a nicer looking prop, a million other things. So then I was like, wait a minute, I have some rudimentary electronic skills. Let's take a crack at this first. So I unscrew the plate and this wire immediately comes. Is this just a frayed wire? So I'm gonna spend 20 minutes fixing this and save me literally a hundred bucks. Okay, so basically this wire worked its way out of the fastener. So I just stripped that little bit of it, gave it a little more space to work with. Just gotta re-crimp it and put it back. Okay, everything's back where it should be. Moment of truth. This is gonna be really obvious and you guys are gonna be like, well, duh. But I actually opened up the switch itself. It was just full of dust. It was so full of dust that the contacts weren't even connected. So every time I flipped it, it was like shoveling a little tiny bit of dust into the part where the switch connects with the contacts. So I literally just vacuumed it out and... Viola. So if I can just amend that that little uh, shop tip, reattach the wires and vacuum, preferably vacuum first. This texture actually makes it hard to uh, glue because the edges won't come out flush. So I gotta sand the pattern from the edge. Once the pieces were all sanded, I glued them together with contact cement, which is, in my opinion, the best glue for EVA foam, but the fumes are really not good for you, so you wanna wear a mask and do this in a well-ventilated area. I want this to come out a little bit taller than wide, so as I'm gluing these together, I'm making sure that the side panels are recessed, meaning that they're inset. Although after all of the gluing was done, it's still registered as a little bit short short to me. And also, I wasn't totally sure I'd have enough surface area to make the angles on either end. So I added a top and bottom panel out of a slightly thicker yoga mat. You can get these at um, hardware stores and Walmart, by the way. Also five below. Lately, I've been getting them on Amazon because, you know, it's the cheapest, which really helps out. Given that I'm on, you know, a YouTube budget here. Then I drew trace lines where I thought the angles should go. To cut down on the amount of sanding that I'd need to do, I first cut out the angles with a sharpened box cutter. You can see that despite my best efforts, it's still coming out a little bit jagged. So I will still have to sand this. However, this is like 10% of the sanding that I'd otherwise have to do. I basically just cut out 90% of the sanding just by trimming it. Like even if, if you don't have a box cutter, but you have scissors, you can still cut out 20% of the sanding you need to do. When I was satisfied with the level of refinement, I cut a hole in the bottom for the handle. I did this using a pipe as a sort of poor man's hole saw. This highly sophisticated prop making tool came from a broken tripod. I forget which one. Then there have been so many, haven't there? Then I cut out the top circle, which I had previously traced using the diameter of the magnet. That only came out easily, by the way, because I went out of my way to avoid getting contact cement inside of the circle. Otherwise, that would just be a nightmare to get out. Then to make the inlaid pattern, I carved it into the foam with a razor pen and heat formed it with my heat gun. The heat caused the grooves to open up, but just be careful that you don't burn the foam, because it will burn. Yeah, all right, that looks in intricate. Yeah, the white's not showing up so great, but that'll 
fix itself once I uh, paint it. Then I super glued the magnet in place. There's some foam spacers in there just to get the magnet to set like that, that little tiny percentage above the top of the hammer. Next, I cut a piece of cardstock in the shape of the circle to cover the magnet. Cardstock is just really thick paper. I super glued that in place, cut the side details, cemented the larger ones, and super glued the smaller ones just to avoid the dry time. I used a wooden dowel off cut from a previous build as the handle. Oddly enough, I had started to stain that with uh, actual wood stain like a year ago. And uh, I guess you could do that, but I want a more leathery look. So I drilled a guide hole in one end so that it would line up with the magnet screw and I inserted it into the hammerhead. When the glue had aired out, I attached the grip ridges. I gotta admit, this was the most tedious part of the whole project. I think this took as much time as everything else up to this point. I'm using random scrap pieces of craft foam which is why the colors are all over the place here. Uh, but none of that will matter once it's painted. I mean, I guess it would save you some trouble if you were to only use black foam, but I know I'm gonna have to do at least two layers, probably three or four, and that's more than enough to cover this up. To help facilitate the painting process, I screwed an eye bolt into the hilt. Did not drill a pilot hole. Then I painted it with gloss brown latex house paint, which will give it the illusion of leather when it dries. I painted the hammerhead and finger grips black with gloss black house paint as a base coat and hung it up to dry. That, that's what the eye bolt was for, by the way. I had to do several layers before I could do the metallic top coat because EVA foam acts like a sponge. It absorbs the first couple layers of paint. Actually, it absorbs the first layer and then the rest are just about erasing the texture. And honestly, it might go faster if you use um, quick, well, I can say, if you're talking about speed, dap Alex dry. I think that, that is like a 20 to 40 minute dry time. It's just a filler putty. So I found that it's cheaper in the long run if you use gloss black latex house paint as a base coat instead of Plastidip, which I've used in most of my EVA foam prop builds. Also, the lid won't close on this, so I'm trying to use it up before it dries out. Then I did the metallic top coat. After it dried, I attached a spare part from the antenna magnet's housing to the bottom of the hammer grip with a piece of leather to complete the pommel. Do, do hammers have pommels? I drilled the pilot hole so as not to crack the handle of the hammer. Perfect. Not perfect. I'm gonna use an awl. So now I gotta make those look like that. And that would just be such a pain to mask. So I'm gonna be using silver Molotow paint, which comes out looking like that. I think that's a close approximation. Definitely enough for camera. And that's how you make a Majolner. Oh, oh that's not gonna work anymore. And that's how you destroy a cell phone from 2012. I can replicate the Hammer of the Gods, but I can't find a cell phone accurate to 2020. <laughs> I'm a failure. And that's how you make a Majolner. <laughs> and that's how you make a Majolner. Oh, it had a baby. It also erases hard drives. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this build, then you can subscribe and hit the bell icon to see future prop builds. So the builds take a very long time and are very expensive to make. So once again, I would like to thank my patrons without whom the videos and the channel's continued existence would not be possible. So if you're able, then you can follow the link below to help me make these videos larger, more elaborate, and way more awesome. And if you're not able to support, I think I have hundreds of tutorials at this point. So you can just start the props playlist and I guarantee I'll have a new upload before you finish. All right, happy crafting. See you later. Worst door ever. Does my insurance cover Majolners? Today I'm making a Majolner. I'm not so good with the umlauts. I don't want to breathe mercury. Maybe if I just stand right here and that's how he died. Oh, I, I think I can. Famous last words. Yeah, I just, just swing around the weight in front of the $2,000 camera. So I wrote to somebody with a much more encyclopedic knowledge of the MCU, and here's the transcription of the mental breakdown that autocorrect had. Moles near. Magellan ores. Mom's car. Mule cart. Mark's heart. Malls are. It's okay, autocorrect. I still love you. Like if I speed this up. See, so I can do this, but I have to do the finger gun. Oh, oh. oh, getting a rug burn!